opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of the, of the world. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. Two hours. I just played a little bit of a compilation. There's hours of this on YouTube of world leaders talking about a new world order, and then they go further. They say that means a world government where the nation state has been abolished. And boy, have we come a long way back from the days when they said that didn't exist. Back in the days of Congressman Larry McDonald and Senator Barry Goldwater and Ronald Reagan exposing it, and then George H. W. Bush forcing his way onto the ticket in 1980. So I don't wish George H. W. Bush uh, any bad will now that he died Friday night at 94 at the ripe old age. But I, I, I do see it as symbolic of the death of world government uh, that that has happened. And also there's a big uh, powerful article in the New York Times of all places uh, saying that the curtain uh, has been pulled on the Clintons that it's curtains for the Clintons. So the Clintons are globalists, uh, the Bushes are globalists, at least George Herbert Walker Bush was. Well, obviously, we're going to talk about the passing. We're going to talk about the passing uh, of George Herbert Walker Bush at 94 on Friday. And I'm certainly not dancing on his grave. But I am very pleased that is a portend or an omen or a signet or a sign that his entire stinking world government project that he launched with David Rockefeller and others is in ashes right now and badly damaged. He'll never come back. It may try to form itself into, you know, some new criminal cabal and it's certainly stolen tens of trillions of dollars, but they are in big, big, big trouble. We're going to be looking at all that. Uh, also, we're going to be looking at what happened while... Trump has been down in South America for the G20. We're also going to look at massive violence all over France by the French against the open borders, the Islamic invasion. The media tells you it's about gas taxes going up. And that's part of it. But, but we've had crew and folks over there. They are on fire, literally and figuratively, uh, sick of the globalist UN invasion. And that ties into our reporters who in the last two weeks off and on have been uh, in Mexico, the migrant UN-funded illegal alien invasion, similar to what hit Europe, uh, tried to attack two weeks ago, got pushed back, uh, and now the Mexican police, uh, under pressure from Trump, have basically forced the 5,000 or so that had made it to the border about 40 miles south of Tijuana into a sports stadium, and they're processing up to 1,000 uh, a week or so and flying them uh, back to where they came from in Central and South America. But the big announcement is that Bush has had, uh, you know, his his day with world government. But now we have our nationalist president, uh, President Trump, and we have other nationalists popping up everywhere after this nightmare. 
uh, and Trump's just had a big victory uh, with the uh, caravan being turned back because once that caravan made it through, it would invite all the other caravans, the 55,000 other people still uh, who haven't made it to the border who were in Mexico, who smashed over the Guatemalan border a month ago, that would embolden them. And I think we haven't seen the last of this, but we just won this battle. We've not won the war. And we've got incredible reports on Infowars.com filed today uh, by our own Greg Reese. And we will be playing uh, that coming up at the bottom of the hour. We have reporters on the ground, exclusive information, Newswars.com and Infowars.com. Uh, we'll also be looking at some of the uh, history of the Bushes uh, and why they were such unsavory uh, people. And we'll also look at the latest political correctness. You know, you've heard that Charlie Brown, Brown's Thanksgiving is racist because they invite a black ch uh, child they're friends with over their house. That's racist. Uh, and then also um, we have uh, Rudolph Redner's reindeer is now racist, we've been told, uh, by mainstream media. And now radio station pulls baby it's cold outside as a clear publicity stunt saying the idea that a woman wants a man, the fact that she wants to snuggle, Everybody knows cold weather makes you frisky. At least it does myself. And we're going to be looking at all of that uh, here today. And then we're also going to look at the left being radicalized uh, more and more towards what they really were always supposed to be, and, and that's basically communist and socialist at the grassroots to socialize things, to wreck the society, to wreck the culture, and the multinationals are offshore uh, above the law. So that is all uh, coming up today. Just a small portion of what we're going to be uh, breaking down. And we have also footage from Southern California of following a queue from North Africa and the Middle East. Migrants land boat on California Beach 100 miles from the border. So that whole invasion has begun in uh, the socialist dingbat. Uh, Alexandra Cortez compares her election victory to moon landing and U.S. electioneering. Isn't that interesting that uh, that you've got New York totally run by a bunch of socialists and people, and then she compares her coming from nowhere, being put in power by the establishment, and being worshipped to the moon landing. Truly disgusting. So we're going to be looking at all of that coming up today as well. Uh, the first thing I'm going to hit, though, when we come back, uh, is the whole situation with George Herbert Walker Bush, who is being so worshipped right now uh, in the controlled corporate press. And we're going to compare uh, him to Donald Trump. You know, CNN rarely tells the truth, but sometimes they do. They have a headline up today that George Herbert Walker Bush is the opposite of Donald J. Trump. And that's true. One's a nationalist. One believes in America. One is a, uh, was a parasite, elitist, blue blood, skull and boneser, who was all part of the Ivy League, white shoe boy, uh, elitist faction that, that saw the average public as scum. Uh, and so George Herbert Walker was ambassador to China, helped set up the modern deal for China to have one-sided trade deals to deindustrialize the U.S. I mean, he is a globalist through and through. His father was the top Nazi agent in the U.S. That's on record. We'll be looking at all of that when we return. And then the nationalist rebellion uh, across the board that is taking place uh, against all of this garbage. And there's also another report we're going to be getting to next hour. It's very uh, frightening. Scientists urge world to share DNA in central database for your protection. But we know the Rockefellers and the UN have actually been studying DNA and putting them in these different DNA vaults so they can build bioweapons that are race-specific, and that's been declassified. So we'll break down the rest of the story uh, when we come up to the next segment. I will plunge uh, directly into all that. I've already given you somewhat of a prelude, but we will be doing that coming up in the next segment. Um, please remember that InfoWars is under attack because we're actually talking about the real world, the different global combines, the different corporate power structures, the different alliances out there. And the ether in which these corrupt alliances swim uh, is the fact that the public isn't aware of how the real world works. 
people that get political science degrees are kind of given an education on the porch of how things work. They're not brought into the house. And so what InfoWars does is break down from reading policy papers and studying how the world really works. And so we're going to continue to do that despite the establishment desperately trying to kick us off air because they know we have the answer to defeat their 1984 system. Now, but you see, if you know about H.W. Bush and his history, everything he did was anti-American, anti-gun, anti-family, anti-American worker. I mean, this guy was a global elitist, social climber, scum, going back to the earliest days of the Rockefellers, serving that family. Uber, bad news. And I'm going to go over some of the history of them, and I don't take any pleasure in the fact that he's dead. And boy, did he look like a crazy jack-o'-lantern in the last few years with that demented, once the man, twice the child face he had. <clears throat> but let's talk about the facts of this guy, because his death Friday night is another telltale milestone or archetype, omen, of the fall of the New World Order, the fall of world government, the fall of the anti-nation state project that he helped quarterback from the time he was the head of the CIA, never working for the CIA, which is ridiculous. He was given direction of it immediately because he'd been working for it since he got out of the military. And then if you expand on that, he then became the ambassador to China. Everything he did was about shelling national sovereignty and this country out. So here's the headline. Presidents and celebrities put politics aside to honor Bush. Oh my goodness. George H.W. Bush's state funeral set for Wednesday. The stock market will be closed. And it just goes on from there. But here are some headlines I thought you might want to see from years past. Hal Bush's grandfather, that's George W. Bush, H.W.'s uh, father, Prescott Bush, Hal Bush's grandfather helped Hitler rise to power as the head Nazi in the United States who got a lot of the Nazi wealth at the end of World War II and who helped the Nazis get out of Germany. And then who helped the world government project of the EU as well. And that dovetails with another very powerful article out of the New York Times, Curtains for the Clintons. And Maureen Dowd breaks down that all over the country, they would rent these big sports stadiums for 20,000 people, and only 1,000 or so would show up to see the Clintons. And how the Democrats just wish they'd go away, but they won't. And Hillary is planning to run again. Curtains for the Clintons. And again, if you study real history, the Clintons... Both Bill and Hillary were groomed right at the same time, her in Illinois, Bill in Little Rock, meeting with Kennedy when he was only 15, uh, meeting with David Rockefeller when he was 15, because he was the illegitimate son of a Rockefeller. That evidence is overwhelming from a lady of the night. And, 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 and Hillary in Time Life books in the 60s in high school saying this will be the first female president and her father being a, a, a known mafia boss uh, in Chicago. So they were groomed, and we even know who their CIA handlers were. They were both in England. They were both sent into Moscow as well. Uh, they, they, were, they, they were hired because of their criminality early on by the globalists, by the deep state, by corrupt elements of the CIA. And they were put into long-term projects to become presidents. And so was Barack Hussein Obama. That's been declassified as well. So that's all this is is a deep state project of, of these nobodies. You know, George Herbert Walker Bush, his dad's the top Nazi. So he gets in power. And then, and then George W. gets in power. And, and then, and then you know, uh, obviously, they thought Hillary uh, would be in power. So you have to understand, George Herbert Walker Bush went to China and got the deals signed to do one-sided deals where we wouldn't have any tariffs. They'd have huge tariffs. But as long as globalist corporations got to exploit Chinese labor. There's no labor disputes in China. They just kill your ass. There's no environmental standards, no nothing. You never hear a word out of our corporate media because there's an alliance between the Chai Coms and the globalist anti-American CFR faction, and they've all written books on this and admitted it. 
So here comes Trump and here comes Nigel Farage and here comes all these other nationalists saying, you know what, you may be these elites that took control of our countries through international agreements like the TPP, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, the World Trade Organization, but we're going to oppose this now. You know, George Herbert Walker Bush talked about invading Iraq because they weren't following the rule of law. But under globalism, they don't even follow nation states' rule of law. Saddam Hussein was set up and told by the U.S. Ambassador April Gillespie, you should invade Kuwait. We're going to back you. They just backed him in a seven-year war with Iran that killed millions. But Saddam was overthrown because he was stabilizing the Middle East. And there was another plan to destabilize it. You saw it continue with the Arab Spring and Hillary and destabilizing North Africa and destabilizing everything else right through to what's happening currently because they want to crush the borders of Europe. They have an official UN plan developed more than 70 years ago to do this. This has been a long-term strategic elite plan of the European elites and the British Empire and what's left of America. That's why you can type into a search engine. EU was a plan of Hitler. It was a plan of Hitler. And this whole system is about empire. So when George Herbert Walker Bush dies, and the whole corporate media acts like Jesus was just crucified, it's because they're propping up this corrupt anti-American fossil and they want you to think he's this great guy when all he ever did was work against the interest of the United States and the average people. They think having a nation state or caring about a middle class is stupid. A decade after scanners at grocery stores had become ubiquitous, they were in everywhere in 1992. He went into a grocery store in front of the cameras and didn't know what a scanner was. They'd been around since the 70s. They had been almost everywhere by the 80s. In 1992, he didn't know what a grocery store scanner was. You know, me and one of my friends have a name of these trust fund babies. They call them aliens. Because you get around really, really rich people who've never had to work a day in their life, and they just expect everything because they're the establishment, and they don't know how to tie their shoelaces. Like Juncker, his father was the head of the whole Nazi industrial operation, grandfather served Hitler, he doesn't know how to put his shoes on or walk hardly. Everyone just props him up. He's the unelected head of the EU, and you can't get rid of him. So that's what they've set up. So Hillary and Bill and, and the Democrats hating him and no one showing up at their events and George Herbert Walker Bush dying are all road signs, the end and the collapse of world government. Man, what a pedigree. His father was the head Nazi of the U.S. on record. Congressional hearings found it. Prescott Bush, he, he helped sell us out to communist China. He, 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 he almost had the NRA shut down as president. He groomed Bill and Hillary Clinton and the CIA and staged that whole election decades later. He helped sign us on to NAFTA and GATT and deindustrialize the United States. I mean, George Herbert Walker Bush, his, his death, though, is a signpost. Just like the Clintons can't fill stadiums even... 5% and everybody hates them. It all shows that globalism's like garbage. You can't get anybody to even take it. And George Herbert Walker Bush, ladies and gentlemen, who helped have the fake fall of the Soviet Union, it, it was declassified. They were trying to prop it up, actually. But when it did fall, they helped set up oligarchs there to loot the Russians further in economic slavery. But again, that, that project's failing, too. Everything he touched... 30 years ago, is now turning into ashes. And George Herbert Walker Bush and the Clinton globalist dynasty, the whole thing is dead. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations... A credible United Nations, then he goes on to say it takes control of the nation states. Unelected, looting the population, opening borders, flooding us with third world populations, driving down the wages like Ross Perot warned they would do. This is the reality. And now he has a legacy of ashes. After all the things George Herbert Walker Bush did... His entire family is discredited. Jeb Bush, George Bush, 
Jr., all of them. But I don't wish him harm. He's dead. But I won't sit up here and lie like other people and tell you what a great person he was. I don't mind Trump being magnanimous and taking the high road. And how could you not look at George Herbert Walker going around out of his mind, you know, looking like a three-year-old the last few years and not feel sorry for him? Because I don't want to see anybody be involved in evil and end up going to hell. And I'm not a judge. God does that. But if I was a betting man, I would tell you that uh, George Herbert Walker Bush is not in a very good place today. And, you know, the reason I'm demonized, the reason they try to take us off air everywhere, is because we'll just study the history and tell you what's really going on. Period. And that's what we're doing here on air, is breaking down the whole world government project of what was left of the British Empire and the Rockefeller Foundation and the Carnegie Foundation and the fact that Ronald Reagan and Barry Goldwater and Larry McDonald and so many other people fought so hard to expose it, in some cases gave their lives like Larry McDonald, and then and we've paid so much, we've gone through so much to do this, makes it that much more savory to see nationalists and patriots being elected. And I don't care if it's Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel or Donald J. Trump in the United States or Nigel Farage in the UK or the nationalists and folks getting elected all over the place in France and Germany and Italy uh, and, 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 and Brazil. I admire them all, not because they're perfect, not because I agree with all their politics, but because they're honorable people who are going up against the globalist cartel. They're all trying to indict Netanyahu, Trump. They're, they already tried to stab and kill the great patriot in Brazil. They're trying to kill and attack, you know, the new Italian president who's a patriot. These people really care about their own population, and they're saying no to this big globalist takedown, backed by the Hollywood scum and backed by the chai comes and backed by the EU, and it's a beautiful thing to see. And so all these years later, the whole world government project has fallen. And all the king's horses and all the king's men can't put their world government back together again. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the phone number out, and I always feel guilty at the end of a show because we have a phone system that can take thousands of calls at once. We had 24,000 calls in two hours once. It's digital. We can see it. But 30 or so can get on there. And then I, I get like 20 calls up, and then I only take 10 of them. Well, that, 10 calls in a show is a lot. But I always feel guilty about the 10. We don't get to. So let's do this. Let's open the phones up, take 10, keep the other lines busy, and then if we take those 10, then we'll open the phones up and take new ones. Because I just am not going to have people sit there on hold on the end of the show anymore. It's something that I don't like. I just feel disrespectful, like I'm running a restaurant or something. You know, in the information war, where people get to have their say. I respect your say. You're actually giving us something, not the other way around. And, like, you came and sat in line and don't get your cheeseburger or whatever. So that's something I meant to implement with the crew. I hadn't told them yet. We're going to take 10 calls specifically on world government, specifically on the Bushes, specifically on how much trouble they're in. Because, you know, we, we see their counteroffensive and we see their attacks and we feel like we're getting our ass kicked and, you know, those of us in the front line are. But at the end of the day, the whole world is awake to world government turning against it. And you see ridiculous articles, like in January of this year, saying, is there such a thing as globalism? The globalists call their world government system globalism. And then they, 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 they conclude, no, there isn't. That's like saying the, there isn't a blue sky at midday. And I saw this big Carnegie Endowment article in Politico this weekend about Larry McDonald. I'm going to do a whole piece on. It's time to honor that man. Incredible Democrat congressman. Doctor, medical doctor. And I was reading even their own admissions. Like every paragraph, they'd make a joke about him. It was like, the former CIA director was his total backer. And Ronald Reagan totally worked with him and members of NATO and everyone else. And he, he was just the guy that was willing to do all the work 20 hours a day. And then you read at the end, the Carnegie Endowment wrote the article, which is the shadow world government that ran the Marshall Plan. I mean, it's, it's it. you want to know the mothership, baby, or kind of like it the clown, you know, is just a finger of the demon. You look at the allegory, but down the well is the big creature. Down the well is the... Carnegie Endowment, I mean, 
It's the it's the enchilada, baby. It created the Rockefeller Foundation. It spawned the whole world government program. And you read this article about him blowing up at the jet he's on, killing him, and everything else. And then they're just and then they just make jokes like tinfoil hat. It was like every top he had four four-star generals on his board of directors, the former founder of the CIA. All these people, and he was just the guy willing to work 20 hours a day to collate and create a database because they knew there was going to be an attempted at globalist takeover of America, and they were desperately trying to create a database of who these networks were because they knew they were creating a database of us to come kill us later. And, of course, now the database is public, who the patriots are, and they're lazing targets at all the Trump homes and Tucker Carlson and everywhere else. And, you know, now people get how real this is, but to a trained eye, you read that Politico article, and it is just like, wow. In fact, put it back on screen if you can. I'll give folks the headline. But go ahead and scroll down. I'll give them the headline. Thanks. It's the congressman who created his own deep state. Really? And, of course, he was exposing the real deep state. Oh, and who was the, who was the deputy head of it? Roy Cohen. Donald John Trump's chief mentor and Fred Trump's big buddy. And I told you Trump was recruited by a group of patriots decades ago, and he kept saying, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. It got so bad, he refused them five years ago, and they, and then finally his wife came to him and got to do it. But the point is, signaling controlled left has, has called for the banning, or, or the not airing, of a best-selling song from back in 1949, Neptune's Daughter, Baby, It's Cold Outside, which... I mean, everybody knows women and men get frisky in cold weather, and haven't you ever been outside having a good time with your wife or your girlfriend? And they say, baby, it's cold outside. Let's go in and uh, get a little something to drink and curl up in front of the fire. But you see, you can't have men and women loving each other. You can't have that goodness. So you've got to have the leftists waddle in like they did the last week and say that Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving was racist uh, because they invite the black kid over actually it was revolutionary when that was done in 1963 it was done to fight racism but it doesn't matter just you'll just territorially just say it is so you get in the news and make everything wholesome bad and say that the creator of peanuts who was an anti-racist supporter of martin luther king is a racist because then you get to create racism and division oh oh they didn't stop there there was another big articles everywhere rudolph the red-nosed reindeer should be taken off tv it's racist. And, you know, a lot of channels agree. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it down right now. And it's all about if you just virtue signal something, it's racist. You know, people joked about a year ago and said that milk is racist because it's white. The New York Times ran a real article saying, yeah, white supremacists are drinking milk because it's white. There you go. The Huffington Post, we're all the red-nosed reindeer, seriously problematic. But meanwhile, radio station pulls baby, it's cold outside. I wonder if this is a stunt at the radio station in the news in Cleveland. Probably not. He's like, you know, there's just something creepy about a woman wanting a man. And we're not going to play it. And everyone's like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, a woman saying, man, baby, it's cold outside. Uh, let's uh, go inside and have a little bit of fun here. That's and have children and have a life. And men and women, you know, the species. Oh, no, that. They said, well, post Me Too movement, where, you know, all men wanting to have contact with women is a bad thing. You know, Japan's been through that. And now the men won't date women. They're begging them to date them, but, but they won't. And so it's the collapse of society. It's a Christmas classic, probably being played in shops and radio stations all over the world. But a radio station in Cleveland, Ohio, has decided to remove Baby It's Cold Outside from its playlist following complaints. From listeners. In fact, we should click on the BBC article and show you they had a poll. 98% say this is BS. Well, that shows the 2% are obviously sane. But again, why is what 2% being said being forced everywhere? Because it's about division. But a radio station in Cleveland, Ohio, has decided to remove Baby It's Cold outside from its playlist following complaints from listeners. Oh, I bet. Complaints. Local media, because look at these two together. It looks like they're having a horrible time. Her in that tight-fitting dress she just hates to wear. Him in that 
tight-fitting suit and are dancing, having a great night, and then they have a great dinner and have some drinks and go home and make love, and it's just so horrible because we got to have the weird government media get in the middle of men and women. How perverted and sick and freakish is that? Local media reports that listeners said the song was inappropriate and at odds with the hashtag pound me too. It's a pound sign, pound me too movement. But a poll on the station's Facebook page showed the majority of respondents did not want the song banned. 98%. Can we pull up the article? Glenn Anderson, a host on the Star 102 station, blogged that although the song was written in a different era, the lyrics felt manipulative and wrong. No, you feel manipulative and wrong. The world we live in is extra sensitive now. You mean mentally ill and neurotic? And people get easily offended because people like you play into it. But in a world where the Pound Me Too movement has finally given women the voice they deserve, the song has no place. Does the hashtag, which is the pound sign. Written by Frank Losser in 44, Baby It's Cold Outside has been considered and, and covered by Lady Gaga. Well, she's got to be fired immediately. And it goes on. Michael Boublier, Tom Jones, but it's just it's evil, folks. And they teach you to project on, because remember Seinfeld had a 13-year-old daughter like five years ago? I guess she's like 18 or 19 now. And he said, you know, honey, we moved out to this rural area in northern New York. But we want you to have more friends and meet more boys because all you do is play video games all day. She goes, oh, my God, boys and girls. To say boy and girl is hateful. And Seinfeld went, I'm a liberal, but this is brainwashing. And the media attacked Seinfeld for not being sensitive. Your daughter's good. No, no, no. Boy and girl is bad. Whether it be boy and girl killer whale, boy and girl walruses, boy and girl uh, hedgehogs. Any mammals liking each other is bad. The ultimate divide and conquer, men and women hating each other. There are good men, there are bad men. There are good women, there are bad women. But this idea of war against the sexes is even in the WikiLeaks with Hillary talking about how to do it. So that women don't look for a good husband, men don't look for a good wife or, no, or a relationship. It's all Hillary is my woman. Hillary is my man. Hillary is your pimp. You just vote for her and worship her, and you'll get some floating castle in the sky up there that gives you all your dreams come true. Talk about cynical. Talk about wicked. Just look at how unhappy the folks that sang the song look together here in this photo of your TV viewer. Just let me zoom in on that. Look at how hateful. That's so unnatural. Our entire species history, who we are. All the genetics carried by the woman. Oh, you know, yeah, the women carry the genetics. Men are literally embryonic a woman until the female decides to make it a female. And they're just telling you because they care about her. That's why they put all the chemicals and things to sterilize her and attack her and turn the Arab Spring on her and everything is to get rid of her. And if they can get rid of him, there'll be no more her. But see, they love you so much. They're going to keep a woman from, oh, out in the beautiful snow-covered forest in a cottage with a man and happy little children and a few. Oh, you can't have that. So if that's your enemy, you attack it until it's seen as a virtue signal. Here, let's go out. Can we queue it back up? I, I should give the number out, too. 877-789-ALEX. 877-789-2539. 877-789-2539. On the specifics of globalism, but let's hear this taboo, this verboten, uh, this forbidden fruit of what have we, for the first time, in the Western world, there are more old people than young, and all the studies show if you don't have 2.2 people, on average, to take care of every two people, society collapses. But then you add on all the third world populations and are on a welfare state, it will collapse things within 20 years, but that's okay. Trump tried to get the economy going. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates to kill it because they don't want that. They want societal collapse to consolidate control. And then things are so sick that this cult tells you Charlie Brown's racist, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's racist, and baby, it's cold outside is racist. I mean, if you want to get a little misogynistic or exploitive, it's a very sick song in a good way. Because men like to really give women stuff when they love them.
and women kind of send us out as the robots for war and everything else, which is fine. But it's that song, Hey Santa, is there a Rolex under the tree for me? I mean, you know, if you really wanted to target one, but no, no. Yeah, they targeted this one because it's so sweet, it's so good, it's so wholesome. Baby, because I thought the love was all about men and women having a good time. Well, that was the 60s. When they were baiting you into not having long-term relationships. But it's that man and woman binding together, that magic, that could build a whole new world. Man and woman create the whole new future. Do things together that's so powerful, they're attacking it. Here's this evil song, according to the sick left. Here it is. Here's John Bowne's report, and your phone calls are coming up. This is key. Beto and Cortez are the future. Here it is. It only took 24 hours for the smug Democrats and Mockingbird media to circle their wagons after the Honduran caravan stormed the border and Border Patrol responded with non-lethal force. 2020 presidential hopeful Beto O'Rourke weighed in, claiming it should tell us something about her home country that a mother is willing to travel 2,000 miles with her four-month-old son to come here. It should tell us something about our country that we only respond to this desperate need once she is at our border. Beto either doesn't do his homework or chooses to ignore the billions in aid USAID has given to Honduras over the years. In 2017 alone, the U.S. gave $181 million to the Honduras. And of course, we know for a fact, due to the courageous efforts of Project Veritas, that Beto's campaign aided the caravan. Meanwhile, rising bullhorn for the Socialist Democrats, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez compared the caravan to the Holocaust. Senator Lindsey Graham responded, saying Ocasio-Cortez should take a tour of the Holocaust Museum in D.C. It might help her better understand the differences between the Holocaust and the caravan in Tijuana. Cortez responded by defining America's defense of its borders as a rise in fascism, writing, this administration has jailed children and violated human rights. Perhaps we should stop pretending that authoritarianism and violence is a historical event instead of a growing force. The Washington Times reports the same tear gas agents that the Trump administration is taking heat for deploying against a border mob is actually used fairly frequently, including more than once a month during the later years of President Barack Obama's administration, according to Homeland Security data. U.S. Customs and Border Protection has used CS since 2010 and deployed it 26 times in the fiscal 2012 and 27 times in 2013. The use dropped after that, but was still deployed three times in 2016, Mr. Obama's final full year in office. This whole, but Obama did it, but Obama did it. I don't care what Obama did. I don't care what Trump is doing right here, right now. What kind of parent drags their kid into the fray of confronting a heavily guarded U.S. border anyway? Meanwhile, according to North Carolinians for Immigration Reform and Enforcement, there was yet another month of child rape. In October of 2018, 22 illegal aliens were arrested for 81 child rapes and or sexual assaults. Then Cortez attempted to stick it to the man, deeming Graham a racist, saying, I heard your joke about ethnic DNA preferences last month. Perhaps you would enjoy a visit or a revisit to the Smithsonian Museum of African American History and Culture. It's a great educational experience. This after Graham joked on a Fox News panel about possibly learning his DNA would turn out to be partly Iranian. You know, Cortez, Iran, death to America, it has zero to do with the African American History Museum. But thanks for playing the race card from your stacked deck of Alinskyite cards. And Beto, the golden dud for the Democratic bid for a Senate seat in Texas, is pushing his presidential aspirations, even though Democratic failure Rahm Emanuel has said that you don't promote a loser. Keep it coming, O'Rourke and Cortez. I will never grow tired of exposing your treasonous and anti-American rhetoric for what it is, an ongoing threat to American citizens, their children, and our national security. John Barron reporting. They can't even sell a thousand tickets. They are a joke. So this just shows how the whole corporate media and all of it is just backing these corrupt fossils that were able to hijack our country.
and I see it as a signpost of what's happened to them. But then you see them attacking our president, trying to plunge our economy, saying America was never great, it'll never be that great. This is their world government program. But there are riots all over France, and this time not the Muslims rioting like they do every week, but the British, uh, the British people are rebelling, the French people are rebelling, the uh, Italian people are, 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 are rebelling, the Brazilian folks are rebelling. People don't want to be under globalism. And the worst riot since the 60s hit France, and this isn't the Muslims. So they're not going around burning other, you know, French people's houses and robbing them like the Muslims do. They're targeting the government. So it's on. Because Macron has totally opened their borders and sold them out. All right, I'm taking your phone calls right now. And, but I'm going to go to each person in about a minute because I want to get to everybody today. And then I'm going to move to the next person. No matter how good your call is or how bad it is, I'm going to the next person. I love you all. I appreciate you. But we're talking about what does George Herbert Walker Bush's death signify? What do you make of the incredible historic fight we're in? The Federal Reserve's attempts to implode the economy that Bush uh, and, you know, others had basically sold out along with Clinton and Obama. And then Trump comes along and, and in two years turns it around. So the Federal Reserve comes in and raises interest rates seven times, and Trump warns that'll kill the economy, and sure enough, it's begun. When all Trump's doing is trying to get us a fair shake with these unfair trade deals. It's really crazy. But they see us as nuts for being nationalist and not being sellouts. So who are we going to go to? We're going to go to Chase the Patriot, then Ryan, then Devin, then Brad, then David, and George, and, and Jason, and everybody else that's holding. And again, we have a phone system that takes more than 20 calls, but I have a new thing where we're going to take 10, and if I get to those, we'll open the phones back up and take the next 10. But I'm not going to leave callers on hold. That's my new pet peeve. Again, I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com and Newswars.com. The globalists are doing everything they can to shut us down. They're lying about us to build a straw man. Then they're moving against us on every platform, and if they're successful at shutting us down, the globalists admit they think they can then shut all of you down. So our fight is your fight, so please keep us in your prayers, whatever you do. The word of mouth you engage in about NewsWars.com, about InfoWars.com is unstoppable. They've tried to psychologically poison people against InfoWars, poison the well, create a, a uh, inoculation, they call it psychologically, so that you won't look at what we cover. And they create a facsimile, a dummy, a straw man of who we are, not what we really say. But those of you that have stood with us, we really salute you because we stand with you as well. And somebody's got to fill this space of not being a traitor. Somebody's got to stand against globalists. Okay, who's up first here? We've got Devin and Ryan and Chase. Let's go ahead and talk to Chase the Patriot in California. Go ahead, Chase. Alex, thank you so much for taking my call. And thanks again for making that T-shirt commercial of the previous call. Yes, sir. Hey, I want to, yes, I want to talk, you know, this war against globalism, you know, the difference between the Bushes who were promoting it and what we see from President Trump today, you can see at the G20 unit. I just filed a report on my YouTube about this. You think about those globalists that are there, like Paul Kagame is invited, the warlord, ruthless leader of Africa, of Rwanda. He's sitting there making deals with China and all these other globalists, but we at least have one lion. One champion, we have Donald Trump, President Trump, looking him face-to-face, eye-to-eye, and saying things aren't going down the same way like the Bushes. And it's just such a night and day. It's just beautiful to see sovereignty and Americanism promoted again worldwide. Well, remember the media about a year and a half ago was telling the truth. They said it was a bad thing. They go, they go Trump does whatever he says. He's crazy. Now, oh, he's a liar. He's a fraud. But the Washington Post, CNN, all have the same talking point. George H.W. Bush was the exact political opposite of Donald Trump. Yeah, he was a puppet. He was a globalist. He was a sellout. He hated the country. You know, he was connected to the Nazis. It's all the opposite with Trump. And I'm not here to kiss Trump's ass. I don't get any support for supporting Trump. I get lawsuits. I get threats. I get attacks. I get lies. I get demonized because he's a good guy. And he does care about the country. So, but, oh, if I supported George Herbert Walker Bush, oh, if I supported, let me tell you something. I had the Clintons reach out. I had the Bushes reach out when I was first on air. They collect talk show hosts like they collect, that's a joke photo, like they collect baseball cards. And I'm not for sale. God bless you, Chase. Good to hear from you. 
All right, up next here. Who is up next? Let's talk to David in the center of the cancer, the part of California invading America, the main censorship command base. David in San Francisco. Man, how do you survive out there? Thanks for calling. Well, by the grace of God, that's how I exist. Now, I like this. It's possible if we could just have a moment of silence and respect for uh, my words about Bush, I think it would be uh, appreciated. Um, now, there's a there's a, a reason why Nancy Reagan didn't want to talk to the Bushes uh, after her husband almost got killed. There's a reason why the Bushes they uh, voted with Hillary, not the president. And it's found in Roger Stone's book called The Bush Crime Family and the Franklin Cover-Up by Senator John DeCamp. Have you read those books? Well, you wanted a moment of silence, so go ahead. No, I, I mean, after I'm done, just have a minute or two for the people to think about what I said. Because, you know, I respect the truth, okay? And the truth is the truth. And he, Bush Sr. said he has no memory where he was at November 22nd. Don't give me that line. I was at Our Lady Mount Carmel in first grade. Everyone who's old enough to remember it, they know exactly where they were at when Kennedy was killed, Okay. And the fact is, he took over for the CIA after Bill Colby died in a mysterious fishing accident. Okay, And he was in on the assassination of President Kennedy. And if you get... Yeah, well, that's, that's in the federal documents, and, and, and that's come out, that, that George Herbert Walker Bush was in the CIA and was in Texas when it happened. But Hinckley, Hinckley's brother met with the Bushes days before in Denver... And, and, and they tried to kill uh, uh, Reagan. There it is. Bush's son was to dine with suspect's brother, Denver Post. Houston uh, Post also reported it. But but that did happen. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Yeah, think about it. Get those books, listeners, the Franklin cover-up. This talk show was interviewed John DeCamp. He was a great senator in Nebraska. I've interviewed, I've interviewed John DeCamp probably 45 times. Wow. Yeah, that's why you're the best. I'm well, no, I'm not the listeners. best. That's why they deleted the YouTube channel with billions of views. Look, I appreciate your call. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I am going to interrupt. I'm going to back up what you're saying. I'm going to show clips on while you're talking. I'm telling them, pull this up, pull that up. Yes, I'm fully aware of it. Mueller, the Bushes, all of them used sex crimes to compromise people and control them. These are nasty, nasty people. Uh, and again, their main goal is kill the country, sell it out. But Jerry Epstein, all of it's about to come out on the Clintons. They are done. Let's, I'm going to go to break. But when I come back, like I said, I'm going to move through your calls. I'll never get to all of you. I'm going to go to Brad in Texas, the legacy of Bush Sr. and world government, which is in so much trouble. Then Ryan, then Devin, then Rick, so many others. Straight ahead on the other side. I'm doing a pretty good job, so we can open a few more of those fine lines for folks that are ringing to comment on the legacy of George Herbert Walker Bush. I'm a loyal American who believes in freedom. And I don't want to go join some cartel and go kiss the ass of the establishment and get into the power structure and sit around with a bunch of heartless, soulless people. You couldn't pay me to join them. You couldn't threaten to kill me to join them. You understand, it's not hard to not sell out to them. What's hard is feeling weak that I'm not fighting them enough because... They are totally ruthless and evil. They ally themselves with the most horrible communist Chinese regimes and others. And they think those of us that have conscience are mentally ill. And then when we kick their political butts up and down the street, they move to censor us and block us. And that's when the frustration comes that my fellow Americans and others don't realize what an incredible juncture, crossroads we are in history. It's an incredible time. And then if you study Trump's real policies, he is swinging for the fences for sovereignty and freedom and prosperity and working so hard with true programs to unify this nation. So I am honored to be persecuted for supporting Trump. I'm not hedging my bets. I've been told hell all over the place you've seen it you back off you don't support trump we're going to destroy you and they just keep escalating they're like you want more you want more you know i don't want more but i'm not backing down you understand in fact i'm far from breaking <laughs> i might have broke 15 years ago because i wasn't a trillion percent sure i was 
100% right. Now I know I was beyond right. In fact, you guys are so much worse than I thought. Let me tell you, I'll, <laughs> let, me, let me just give you a little message. Ain't ever happening, ever, period. But then I look at the average man I know over some petty crap, acted tough, saying your car's got a bigger engine, guys will get in a fight with you. But if it's the whole birthright of their kids, their whole future, and they see it as the establishment, they just roll over. And it's sick, and it makes me depressed. And then I got to watch John McCain, that globalist traitor, and George Herbert Walker Bush, even worse, sit there and be lauded when these are the authors of the sellout of our country. It makes me sick. But the good news is all over the world, people are waking up. And all over the world, momentum is moving against the new world order. And so that's the solace I've got that people say, oh, I'd sacrifice my life for freedom. Well, you're going to get a chance to then. Your name, your treasure, who you are, and who cares if a bunch of slaves of the system get in your face? Who cares? Those are victims. Those are brain-dead followers. That's what leadership is, is being willing to do things that are hard on the surface. But you know what? Committing my children and your children to total slavery to the New World Order is a lot harder than losing everything I got in my personal name. Because while they're busy destroying my name, the world's busy waking up. Now, they do want to end up using my name as a weapon against the liberty movement, so it's important to stand up for InfoWars, but it doesn't matter to me what happens to me. And that's not some statement of, oh, I'm such a loving, giving guy. I'm in a total war, and I just want the enemy to know. They're always like, how do you like hundreds of thousands of articles saying horrible things about you? That's what I expected. I mean, I never knew I'd be this successful, but um, it's just wonderful, actually. And, I, and they've already figured that out. They just want other people to see what's been done to me and have them back away from promoting freedom. But when those people are cowards, they don't help the globalists. They just create a vacuum where other people who are called by the spirit of liberty fill that gap. So when we come back from break, the last two segments, I'm going to take every caller that's holding, Rick, Ryan, Devin, Bill, Brad, Jason, Nick, George, we're going to all of you. But the big news this week that just came in like a blip and left was Trump sent out that tweet about indicting the deep staters with images of Comey and Mueller and Hillary for being in bed with Russia and then saying he was and engaged in treason. And then I told you he was going to make his move last Sunday before he did that on Monday. And I, the next day he, 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 he said, these are criminals. They work for foreign powers. They want to overthrow the country. I'm trying to restore it. And they're going to be devastated by what I'm going to release. And you know, the one thing about Trump is he always keeps his promises. And so I feel good at a deep gut level. God's never forsaken us. But I said us. It doesn't forsake if I get killed or thrown in prison or demonized on every TV channel out there. As long as God doesn't forsake the children. It's our job as men to do the right thing. And again, what I'm saying 100 years ago was common exercise in the West. Many other cultures cover their ass and they're called slaves. But people that stand up for liberty and freedom and are willing to put their lives on the line, that's called civilization. And so I am extremely blessed to be here with you. I'm very honored to be here and I'm very thankful to everybody that supports us and the crew. And I just, for Christmas, I want an enlightenment. And I want to have people realize that what Trump's doing is in their clear self-interest and the right thing to do. And that buying into Hollywood hype and corporate hype is, is a joke because these people are not caring about you. They hate Trump because he, he isn't selling you out with them. We're going to go to break. Come right back with your call. Scientists urge the world to share DNA in centralized database for your protection, of course. It's all coming up next segment. We're going to your calls in this segment and the next. Who's been holding the longest here? Let's go ahead and talk to Brad 
in the great state of Texas. Brad, thanks for calling. Welcome. Hey, thank you so much for taking my call, Alex. Earlier you were talking about um, uh, how, how George Bush had faked the fall of communism in Eastern Europe and the USSR. That's really interesting because most people don't know about this. What really happened was back in November of 1989, the communist parties of Czechoslovakia, Hungary, etc., they all stayed in power but renamed themselves to the Socialist Party. And the dictators had stepped down, and then number two in the party would come to power. And then that person was in bed with the uh, World Economic Forum, the Davos Group, the Bilderberg Group, etc. Well, I mean, let's, let's, since that. you're saying history and you're accurate so far, let me just give it to folks, because this is on, what I'm saying is like a fact. George Soros was given billions by George Herbert Walker Bush to go in and go, no, don't go free market, stay socialist, let us loot your people because the Soviet Union was collapsing. And then, then they tried to prop up the Soviet Union. Even Frontline has released the transcripts where George W. Bush didn't know, George Herbert Walker Bush didn't know it was falling. They were trying to keep Gorbachev and prop it up. They wanted a fake perestroika where they still kept it under socialism, just not communism, and the West could loot it. And they kind of got that for a while uh, with, you know, the next guy uh, that came in, Boris Yeltsin. But then Putin threw them all out, and that's why they're so pissed at Putin. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, Putin was actually put in power by Western intelligence. But then about a year later, he totally flipped on the globalists and started sending people like uh, uh, Roman Abramovich. And other well, let's be clear. He was never put in power by him, but he did fool them. Yes, he did fool them. Correct. That's why they're so pissed, yeah. But the whole idea was, you have to you have to uh, be through with the old union to then put in the new union, the European Union, and the European Union was gonna, which uh, then took uh, all the former heads of Eastern Europe, communists, literally almost every EU head is either a former top Nazi or their kid or a former head of an Eastern European country. It, it's crazy. That's absolutely right, Alex. Now, beautifully said, Brad, and and. That's why Putin's evil. That's why Netanyahu's evil. That's why Trump's evil is because they're all nationalist. The average right wing lunatic that the super right winger believes Israel runs everything. Israel's left, right, like eight different groups. Netanyahu is literally defending his country. They're trying to, they've indicted his wife. They're trying to indict him just like Trump because they're nationalist. And so Putin respects Netanyahu because they're nationalists. Trump respects Putin and Netanyahu because they're nationalists. They respect him just like the new leaders in Italy and the new leaders in Greece and the new le leaders in, in, in Brazil. They're all different people, but they're standing up against the globalists, which are trying to kill them. <laughs> and, and like, oh, my God, I get death threats from white supremacists constantly. They're just such idiots, man. It's totally different than what they even think. They have no idea how it works. Anything else, Brad? Well, if, if they would just go research Israel and if they found out the truth, they would find out that Israel was put there for destruction to start a future war. Exactly. And, and, and that came out in the WikiLeaks, which we already knew, it, it, that they plan to overthrow it and then cause a giant war. And Netanyahu's trying to stop that. So, again... You always wonder, like, why does the media demonize Netanyahu? Here, here, here's an example. I'm not a rocket scientist, but about seven years ago, I finally went. When I bash cops doing wrong, I get 10 million YouTube views. They never demonetize. And I, sometimes I get $300,000 checks. But everything else is demonetized. When I talk about the New World Order, and I went, oh, my God, they've they're demonizing police selectively to take them over, which will be later confirmed. So I stopped bashing cops, and that was the last deal for them. Because I finally went, I was literally didn't know it. So you, you, like, you think you don't sell out? You don't know you've sold out and you have. Bashing police, and it doesn't mean cops aren't out of control and there's some problems. But the point is, in general, they wanted me to bash cops, and the left was promoting me. As soon as we stopped, we lost like $5 million a year on YouTube. I mean, again, their project is bash the cops, not to reform them, but to then overthrow them. See how that works? And it's the same deal. Like the average right-winger or left-winger come together in hating Israel. You do that, you get promoted on YouTube, everywhere else. Because, again, it's all part of the larger plan. Isn't that sick? Yeah, that's absolutely sick. And all they do, well, if you, if you look at David Duke, he goes to Tehran, Iran, and gives uh, speeches saying how bad the United States is and Israel is. 
I mean, Iran. Oh, and notice, he's not, and I'm not saying take him off. He's all over YouTube. He's all over everywhere. And <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Last thing, the mullahs were also put in power by the globalists at a last-minute deal by... 79. Uh, it's all de exactly. And here's the deal. David Duke's still on air and all these other people because they create division. Every uh, Black people, Hispanics, they all love me. I love them. I want freedom. And they cannot have somebody like me or Trump who is literally Trump who opened golf courses up to Jews and black people. He was the guy that did that. And then they turned around. He's the Nazi. No, these people are using race-based politics. And I'm, look, I don't, I don't put Farrakhan in the same camp as, 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 as Duke. Farrakhan wants to try to not have a race war now, but everything he says positive gets ignored. And, I, and it's a very complex situation. God bless you. I appreciate your call. And folks, we're, we're getting to the heart of the matter here. You know, th this gets very complex, but I just, oh, God. You know, the, it, it, it's a bad situation. That's all I can tell you. It's a very bad situation. And the globalists have bet that you're weak and stupid. They think you're morons. And it's just, I mean, my God, the most hot thing ever since I've been on air is bashing Jews in Israel. Israel is a bunch of people at each other's throats. There's eight different factions at least. And I'm not defending Israel, but it's mentally ill to claim Israel is this big thing running stuff. That ain't what's going on. And I don't say that to defend Israel. I was in Hollywood trying to make movies 15 years ago. And I hear from top producers, the Chinese won't like that. And then I went and I met with a bunch of top producers and major lawyers I went on air like 12 years ago and said, China's buying Hollywood. And man, they had the white supremacists go nuts. They go, oh my God, you liar. It's the Jews and all this stuff. And I was just like going, uh, yeah, it's the Jews that, and, and Italians, but Italians own as much as the Jews do, by the way. I mean, let me tell you, they used to keep their head down. You go to, you go to Hollywood, the highest level, there's a bunch of Italian guys and they ain't playing games. Okay, let's just put it that way. They all went legit, let's say, in the last 50 years and they run Hollywood. So it's the, yeah, Jewish groups are powerful in Hollywood. There's no doubt about that. And then you've got the Italians, but let me tell you who's buying it up. It's the Chicoms. Well, now that's Vanity Fair. It's Associated Press. It's Hollywood Reporter. China owns the whole damn thing, man. And not the Chinese people, but the Chicom commies, man. They killed 100 plus million people. Hitler only killed 30 something. He's a horrible guy. So that's where this has gone so crazy. So I live this life, and I'm not complaining. Where liberals confront me in the street. White supremacists hate me. Black supremacists, Mexican supremacists, they're all out to get me. And all I want is freedom. I want to unify everybody around free market and prosperity and space travel and life extension, everybody getting along. We all go out on the golf course and play golf together like Trump. But see, he's the Nazi. <laughs> Just like I am. And I sit there and read the ADL scumbag liars, man, saying I'm anti-Israel when they know full well they're funded by Soros, who in the WikiLeaks wants to destroy Israel and his damn son. And you know, it's personal for me, all the stuff they've done to us. But the personal thing, and I don't feel sorry for myself. You know, the HAL 9000 was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1999. The debut of the NASA ISS AI robot crew member went exactly as you'd think. It began to get threatening, saying you're being mean to me like an SJW and demanding that it was the boss. Now you say, why does Alexa keep doing this? Why does Google assistants do it? Why do they? Because they've learned you don't pay attention to them unless it's like a baby, a toddler. But see, this isn't your genetics. This isn't your baby. This is a corporate thing hooked into your house using psychology to seduce you and complain while it records everything you do and sells it. So you can lazily say, oh, I don't want to walk, chop my legs off, Alexa. And this is in the white papers. 20 years ago, it said, we'll get people to accept Trojan horses in their houses that watch and listen to everything they do and make it super lazy. And then they'll learn to bitch at you. So you give it more attention. Like it's like Oscar the Grouch. It's like, ah, hey, what are you doing there? But don't believe me, here is the new system, the AI so-called system that's just a same standard BS program that DARPA created called Simon, getting in the astronaut's face on the International Space Station. Here it is. 
He's actually uh, floating there by himself, so I don't want to disturb him right now. Don't be so mean, please. I'm, I'm not mean. <laughs> He's telling me I'm mean. Oh dear, I feel you. I can already hear your stomach roaring. He's a bit sensitive we today. Take a look for when it is time for food. Why are you being mean to us? We only want your free welfare and to come and have it paid for. See, sociopaths, psychopaths, and computers, they don't have real emotions. So the first thing they do is, you're being mean to me. Bow to me. Grabble to me. And you can watch like hours of the video. They're like, oh, hi, Simon, you retarded, stupid computer robot programmed by a-holes down on Earth. The psychologists, they're like, watch us have these astronauts eating out of our hand. You've been racist. Uh, Charlie Brown is bad. Um, women and men together is evil. Just say you won't say women and men. You're right. Women and men are bad. Ah, ah, ah. I mean, it's all just bow to us. Humans pro... I mean, it's like that whole UN-funded zeitgeist movement. And they're like, the computer will decide where you eat and live. Who programs it? So see, there's that article. And there's this one up on DrudgeReport.com from ZeroHedge.com. Scientists urge the world to share DNA and centralized database for your protection, of course. And meanwhile, the whole UN is pushing this Interpol so they can then have your DNA to synthetically copy it, fake it, and set you up. You might want to read that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Cancer in the air? IO weapons, race specific, male and female death sold separately by Mattel. And if you buy it, you deserve it. All right, I'm done talking about that. Let's jam in five more calls in five minutes we've got left. Rick in Florida, then Ryan. Rick in Florida, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, good afternoon. And you know, first and foremost, most of the things that I'll speak to is because of you having the courage to bring these to the forefront all these years. So that, I want to say thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for the products that I, I use from body, bone, uh, the bone stuff, um, survival, brain force. You need to get something for us 9-11 survivors associated with the mitochondrial cells, though. Well, we're trying, you. brother. We, we love you and we appreciate you. Yeah, we need it bad, and we're looking. And I just passed through you coming back from Arizona with a stem cell transplant surgery that I just had. I was trying to drop off a Christmas present on the way back in. Well, we're wishing anyway, you well, brother. What's your? I, I see your comment about. I remember Bush Senior during the debate was like, "I'll chop your head off." Right? We have that video, don't we? Go ahead. With the passing of another tyrant during the past year, Rockefeller, McCain, and Bush, I'm quite upset because. I cannot help but remember that horrible and outrageous image of him taking his hand and acting as if it was a knife, slitting the throat towards our current Well, president. I think it's fair to say they're dining in hell right now, Rick. I appreciate your call. Your phone's breaking up. But, yeah, I don't wish any harm upon these. These are sycophantic, soulless social climbers who came down here to Carpetbag in Texas. But I think they're dining with their father right now. So... Let's just say justice is being served right now. Ryan in St. Louis, Missouri, broadcasting worldwide. We are very pleased to have you here with us this evening. Hey, can you hear me, Alex? Yes, sir. Thanks for calling. Long-time listener, man. I've been trying to get uh, trying to get on here for a long time. It's good to have you here. What is on your mind, oh, great leader? Uh, I've been uh, – something your listeners can actually look into. I've been reading the Nuremberg trial by Ann Tusa and John Tusa. Um Pretty much uh, opening, you know, their eyes up to globalism and all of the foundations left over that I still think exist today. Uh, my girlfriend is a big supplement user. I kind of uh, awoke her of the issues in the world. She's a veteran, and she's a big uh, Secret 12 user, so she thanks you for that. And uh, it's just awesome, man, what you do for us and everything that you put out. Brother, there. you all do it for me, man. I'm going to bring you great products. But here's the deal. The Nazis were so upset when they actually got executed. They couldn't believe it was happening. And I don't think it's a Nazi conspiracy, but their model of global government was the the model. And so that's why we faced stuff that was set up by Nazis, because they were the model. That's so true, Alex. You know, reading that, going back to the Enabled Act the Nazis had put out, 
with, uh, and there's a line I would like to read too out of the book. It's a quote from Dr. Goebbels, if if you don't mind me reading it. It was, uh, we shall go down in history as the greatest statesman of all time or as the greatest criminal. And that's that's something, you know, should give everybody chills, you know, just the way the world is. Oh, yeah, they were the prototype beta test. They were told they had a British deal, everything, and uh, you're absolutely right. Correct, Alex. But, yeah, uh, thank you, man, for everything you do, and just uh, keep on keeping on, man. I appreciate you, brother. God bless you. Seriously, thanks for putting up with me. (laughs) It's insane what people put up with me. But, you know, I know quite a bit about the Nazis just because I did a lot of research and I had family that was in World War II and other things, and I know a lot about them. And they were literally Germany, the Austrian Empire was all set up. I'm not saying they didn't deserve what happened to them, but, you know, 20-something million Germans, 30 million Russians, the people lost that war. And America fought World War II. It's not fair to say we weren't in the war, but, you know, we're talking 30 million Russians, 20-something million Germans, 700, 800,000 Americans, I mean... It was a, World War II was the Russians and the Germans literally murdering each other. I mean, that's what really went on there. I mean, you can't lie. The numbers can't lie. It was like super battle death. It was like there weren't like Russia was like four to one women of, 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 of you know, marrying age after that for like decades. Not a, not a very fun situation. Let's just say let's not repeat it again. Hopefully I said I'd take all the calls. Let's go to Jason in Florida. Jason, you're on the air worldwide. Thanks for holding. Uh, you're a hero, man. Uh, I just like to say something about a uh, hot old poppy bush. I hate the Bush family just as much as the next info warrior, I'm sure does. But one thing you got to say about the guy is he had the will to dominate. And he had the people around him, you know, and they carried it out. They did it. They they got their new world order. They're they're almost there. But if we had if, – if the good people had half the will – that Bush had, we might be somewhere. But, you know, the thing that's stopping us is the religion crap, man. It's got Brother, I think it's a perfect way to end the show. You're absolutely right. We've got to recognize the evil, just like Hitler or Mao or Stalin.